I'm just so glad that they're like giving witchcraft like it's due in Star Wars finally. Mm -hmm. It's stunning, it really is. I like just seeing that group of empowered women. So empowered. We finally have the representation we deserve. Representation. <laughs> One. The power of two. So it came to my attention that there was a huge, massive change over at Rotten Tomatoes, and I'm actually happy about it. Online review aggregators have been a staple of the internet ever since Al Gore invented the World Wide Web. It's how mostly everyone can get a sense of whether a movie is good or not, instead of having to sift through thousands of individual reviews, which may or may not be good. But exactly what change did Rotten Tomatoes implement? And how is the critical drinker involved in all of this? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood. Before we get into this, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out with continuing to grow and it's totally free. So this week, Rotten Tomatoes decided to do away with audience scores on its site. Previously, you'd be able to compare what the critics are saying about a movie versus what individual reviewers and audiences are saying. Having the two scores was a great way to tell a few things. Namely, both scores served as a barometer of how woke or not woke a certain movie or TV show was. For example, if critics absolutely loved a movie and gave it a certified fresh score like 90%, and audiences hated it with a significantly lower score, it usually meant that the film was laden with progressive messaging. Think of score discrepancies as a rainbow meter, like on Hardcut's YouTube channel. Ever since starting their channel, Hardcut has had a rainbow meter. From one to five, how progressive is the messaging in the film? Very few channels and absolutely no aggregator sites have such a system. And it's important because those films which focus on the message generally tend to have poor writing, terrible plot, and awful character development. By focusing so much on woke agenda, these films and shows lose the core tenets of what it means to be a good movie or a good TV show. But exactly what led up to this? Well, a few months ago, Disney decided to release yet another show, The Acolyte. In a nutshell, people disliked The Acolyte for several reasons, including its deviation from established Star Wars lore, perceived political messaging with the coven of lesbian space witches, and character development issues. Fans, by and large, felt that the show didn't stay true to the core elements of the Star Wars universe, introducing concepts and themes that seemed out of place, again, like witchcraft. Additionally, the inclusion of these political and social issues was so heavy-handed that it detracted from both the story and the character development. The writing and the pacing were also major issues with most of the audience finding the characters underdeveloped and the narrative less engaging than what was previously advertised by Disney. Nerd Roddick, The Critical Drinker, and Star Wars Theory, all prominent voices in the YouTube and online fandom community, were critical of the Acolyte for several reasons. Their critiques centered on concerns about the show's approach to Star Wars lore, character development, and perceived political messaging as I mentioned earlier. But exactly what were their major problems with the Acolyte? These YouTubers express frustration over what they saw as a departure from the core elements of Star Wars that fans love, such as traditional character arcs, the portrayal of the Force, and adherence to the established timeline and mythology of the series. They were also critical of what they perceived as the show's overt political messaging suggesting that it prioritized contemporary social issues such as the alphabet soup crowd over core storytelling. This was seen as part of a broader trend within modern media, which I've talked about on my channel before, where Nerd Roddick, Critical Drinker, and others point out that political correctness and identity politics overshadow creative integrity. Like I do on this channel, the critical drinker in particular often critiques the quality of writing and character development in modern films and TV shows. He argued that the Acolyte suffered from weak characterization and plotting, which detracted from the overall enjoyment of the series, and he was right. The mainstream media absolutely eviscerated these YouTubers for what they perceived as toxic fandom behavior. The media often labeled their criticisms as reactionary or rooted in an unwillingness to accept new ideas 
or diversity within the Star Wars franchise. These YouTubers were accused of fostering negative, divisive environments and being resistant to any change that deviates from traditional norms within the franchise. This backlash from mainstream media outlets was fueled by a broader cultural divide between more traditionalist fandoms and newer, more progressive interpretations of established franchises. The conflict highlighted ongoing tensions within fan communities over who gets to define the future of beloved properties like Star Wars. But it's all smoke and mirrors, you see, because the progressives that are bitching and moaning about real fans like Nerdrotic, Critical Drinker, and Star Wars Theory don't actually give one single solitary fuck about Star Wars or any other franchise. Remember, these are miserable humans who hate themselves. I mean, can you tell me where you find joy in anything they say? So they want to go around and destroy everything with their agenda so that no one else can have it. But you know what? I'm actually glad that Rotten Tomatoes got rid of the audience scores. As I mentioned to Bobby and Matt over on Hardcut, this presents an opportunity for YouTubers like us. Hardcut already has a rainbow meter, and like I told Bobby, they need to really highlight the scoring system because it'll become even more important than ever. Now, I don't want to steal or copy their idea, but over the coming months, I'll be coming up with a scoring system of my own so that you can know whether a movie or show is espousing progressive, politically correct, sanitized agendas, which we all hate. So now let me turn it over to you. How do you guys think I should go about this? What sort of attributes would you like to see in my scoring system that tells you guys how woke a TV show or movie is? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.